good afternoon all. Thank you for waiting. My name is Miriam Wamboy. Um, I run an organization called Women Progressing Communities. I work with young women and girls from the informal settlements, specifically in Korogocho. An organization for girls and not necessarily to be test, but to first mentor them on the importance of understanding why education is important and understanding their dreams and talents and ideas as much as they come from the informal settlements. I think at the end of the day, they have individual ideas of what they want to be, but when organizations uh, run programs, they are forced to take up these programs because they don't have an alternative. So my current focus has been identifying the needs of these girls and their passions and talents, and then linking up with organizations, not necessarily in tech, but other fields. So basically, that's what I do. I'm Thank you, Miriam. Uh, could you tell us if you've heard about okay. social activism before? No, I actually heard about it. Uh, I've heard about it, but I've not, um, I've not had an opportunity to extensively understand what it entails. So I've just had a, like heard of it briefly, I'd say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it basically entails like doing good for the society, like putting the society's needs first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I started it last year in 2019 after I left my current job early last year. And um, so the one desire is why I started it is first I felt there's a gap in the informal settlement in terms of girls being exposed to different fields. In most cases, different organizations do different things and uh, when enrolling the girls, girls are enrolled and they join because they don't have alternatives and because they don't have opportunities to choose what they want to do. So if it's, a, it's an organization being tech, like what you are doing, they automatically come to tech because they don't have an alternative. And as a result, they'd drop out in the training. You'd find if you enroll 60 girls, by the time you're graduating, you have 35 girls. The rest dropped out along the way. So it really started my desire to start an organization to first lay a good foundation in schools, in high schools, in informal settlements, to understand, for girls to understand different, different kind of careers that are available, for girls to understand they have passions, what can they do with their passions, their organizations doing different things, and they can actually get access to all these. So I decided to now focus my organization on exposing these girls to these opportunities out here and different um, things that they could actually do and then linking, that, linking them up with them. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to know who your stakeholders are. Who do you work mm -hmm. with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for my first stakeholder, the girls. So I work with girls between the age of 17 to 24 so those are girls in high school and girls out of school we have mentors uh, so most of the mentors are girls in the same community who have gone ahead and they're, they are stable they are economically financially and socially stable then we have parents we cannot run the, it was quite a challenge to work with girls and not involve parents because the question where do the girls go why are you spending a lot of time with them and then we have community organizations because we say I cannot work alone in a community where other organizations are in existence. So we have community organizations and then we have NGO and governmental organizations that offer trainings to girls. So I've, I've been able to identify a few who now take up the girls when they want to do certain courses. So those are my current stakeholders. How, how do you measure your social impact? Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good question. My first social impact that really that really inspires me to do the work I do is when one girls are able to finish high school. In the informal settlements, if you go to a normal average class of a mixed school, you'd find a number in a class that accommodates say 30 students. You'd have 20 boys and 10 girls. And by the time these girls reach to form four, we'll have a low number of girls, like four are girls 
and we have say 15 boys left so the number of girls who successfully finish high school is really on a very small percentage so my first success or impact is when we have an increase of the number of girls i work with three schools in Kolokocho. when the number of these girls as much as we started last year by the time december we were getting to december the number of girls that we started with or the number of girls is for four the number is better compared to the previous year so that's number one how i measure my impact number two is now the girls we've been able to link with programs that they successfully go through these programs and they're able to graduate or finish their courses and they're able to become financially stable to support their families. Also the success stories from parents, like now the girls, the change of attitude, change of behavior. So those are some of the things we look at when we look at the success or the milestones our program has had. What are some of the challenges that you face in your line of work? Mm -hmm. So obviously the first challenge is financial because looking at I'm a community-based organization, so number one we need funding and that's why when I started, uh, I decided to start with what I have, you know, so I do not run, I, I, I don't have like an office space. So most of the time I work from home and I work with schools, so minimizing the resources that I have. But when it comes to exposure, like taking these girls for company visits, site visits, most of the time, uh, if I've not received funding, I have to use the money from my own, from my own pocket or from my, you know, from my own, and then to sustain the the organization. So the first challenge has always been financial. Number two is also behavior change. Of course, we face a lot of resistance in the community in terms of different stakeholders having different interests. Um, or like the first has always been, why not boys, why am I focusing on girls alone, boys are left out. So you're left thinking, should you change forecasts or stick with girls? So there's also a lot of community interest. Like for, for instance, why don't we do SRHR as much as we do SRHR? Why don't we do rape cases? So there's there's a lot of issues happening around and everybody as a community advocate, they'd like you to address all these challenges. And they don't understand, you know, that this is the scope of the organization, this is what we are working towards. So I'd say that has also been a challenge. Um, initially you said uh, you use your own money to sustain the program. Yeah. Are you thinking or planning uh, to have it more sustainable in terms of maybe if the girls join your training, they pay just a small fee? Is it something yeah. viable or workable for you? Yeah, just absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good suggestion. And yes, we are working towards that, especially I went through a training and one of the things that was highlighted is local resource mobilization. But sometimes when we work with the communities, we happen to look at them from the point of they do not have. But in real sense, we do have, even if it's just a thing, even if it's not monetary, but it can be something in kind that could go along with supporting the program. So one of the things that we were to start this year before every other thing happened was as much we have the parents as the stakeholders to have them to distribute a certain amount for the site visits because we're telling them that we're taking your girls to maybe safari for women in tech forum and we need to pay her transport and would appreciate if you could contribute a hundred shillings towards this. So that's one of the things, that's the approach that we are looking at having this year, have the parents contribute and obviously continue mobilizing resources from donor, from high network individuals just to support the program. That is some amazing work you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah, and Thank keep you. empowering these girls to be better and to do what they, their heart desires to do. So, uh, Thank you very much. To wrap this up, I would like mm -hmm. you to give like, a word to the young people out there who are looking forward to starting, you know, uh, mm -hmm. organizations like yours or, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, first of all, it was really nice talking to you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share what I do. And one of the things that say is just start. 
and um, you don't have to wait for resources to come for you to start uh, implementing your passion or filling a gap that you see in your community or addressing a challenge that is going on if you feel you have a solution that will just help one person you don't have you don't have a, you though you don't need a quorum for you to change something or to change the world you just need to touch the life of one person so if you have any opportunity or any possibility of you changing that one person's life then go for it